Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Holly Prendergast. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. And here's your news now. Liz had the chance to interview families at Cabrini's family picnic that was a part of the many different family weekend events. Let's see what the different families had to say about their experiences at Cabrini. Hey everybody, I'm Liz Scopoletti and I'm here on location at Cabrini College's Family Weekend. Inside the cafeteria is the family picnic. Let's go inside and talk to different families and see what they think of Cabrini so far. We're here with Nick who's a freshman. Nick, can you tell us how you like Cabrini so far? I absolutely love it. Uh, my favorite part is probably the calf where I'm at now. So. Now what do you and your family have planned for today? Uh, I think we're thinking about taking the uh, bus trip to Wayne today. We'll just walk around town, check it, check it out, see what it's like. We're here with Katie, who's a sophomore, and her family. Katie, can you tell us what you guys have planned for today? Uh, we plan on going to Big Prize Bingo and uh, the meet and greet, and we're here at the picnic. How do you like being at Cabrini so far? We know it's your second year. Have you adjusted and being away from home? I love it here. It's really nice. We have Kiana Volney and her family here. Can you guys tell us what you guys are planning on doing today? Um, any events that you are going to go to on campus? Sure. My parents came up for um, the Dean's List. I got the Dean's List for last year. And we're just here to visit. Thank God the weather's holding up. Um, later on, they're going to help me get some more stuff into my apartment. And then later on, possibly just look at the other events on campus. Students had a great time this past weekend attending various events with their families. I'm Liz Scopoletti for Location. Cabrini hosted its sixth annual Athletic Hall of Fame induction last weekend. Megan has more on the story. On Friday, September 23rd, four prominent members of Cabrini's athletic history were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Major Timothy Anderlonis for men's basketball. Megan Dillon Grant for women's basketball, Duncan Hubley as men's soccer coach, and Christy Malone for women's lacrosse. <laughs> Friends and family gathered in Dixon for a night of fun and memories. We gather this evening in a spirit of gratitude. Gratitude for all the hard work, dedication, and sacrifice that has gone into the life, the mentors, the many people that have surrounded the inductees, and friends and family that gather this evening. I think a person receiving a Hall of Fame induction or an award, award of any kind has to look around and figure out how they got to this point. As I look into the crowd, I am humbled, but not surprised, at the support I have tonight from my family and friends. It is because of you I have become a Hall of Fame athlete at Cabrini College. This is the third one of these that I've gone into, and this is the first time that I've had notes. And I guess it's because there's 30 people here that played for me. I do want to go through a, a lot of thank yous today, um, especially to the Carini Athletic Department. Thank you. I am honored. Um, thank you to Dr. George. Um, thank you to my family. One person that I think has always been a supporter for me is my mom. For location, I'm Megan Sokolowski. Cabrini College President Marie Angelala George gave her annual State of the College speech last weekend. Here's Jimmy with more. On Saturday, September 24th, Dr. Marie George addressed members of the college community during her annual State of the College address. President George started off by announcing the official enrollment figures for this semester, as well as a quick breakdown of the first year students. Next, she highlighted Cabrini's alumni community and their accomplishments. The central focus of the president's speech, though, was how the campus has changed over the summer and how Cabrini College will continue to evolve over the next 10 years and beyond. The renovation is the short term. A lot of what you're seeing here uh, that I talked about in terms of improvements are kind of the, the early stages of moving forward, but we have even bigger plans because we want to punch out from founders uh, into what is already our space that we can build here, a dining and a multi-purpose uh, structure that would be a two-story. So it would be a larger marketplace, very uh, you know, upgraded in terms of all of the infrastructure required for, uh, uh, for food preparation, 
and have a second uh, story that we could use uh, and, and divide up for various multi-purpose uh, events. Right now we have the atrium and the Nerney Field House. In addition, all of the on-campus houses will be torn down and replaced with new residence hall shown here in dark blue. An underground parking structure at the south side of campus, a new building for faculty where the Widener Center is, and an expansion to the library were all some of the many changes that will be coming to Cabrini in the coming years. Reporting for Location, I'm Jimmy Kroll. Tuesday was the deadline for some Delaware Valley residents to sign up for state and federal relief from Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee. Long lines formed at FEMA offices filled with people who are confused about eligibility requirements for getting aid. Public welfare officials will be fact-checking each claim to fight against fraud. And that was your walk around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Liz. Arch West, creator of Doritos, died in Dallas late last week at the age of 97. Doritos, a popular junk food with people of all ages, were originally taco flavored and were created at Frito-Lay in 1964. The chip was named after Doradito, which means little golden in Spanish. Wes will be buried with Doritos sprinkled over the top of his casket. The Federal Drug Administration is set to ban the only over-the-counter asthma inhaler by the end of this year. Primatine Mist, used by more than 2 million users, will be banned because of the chlorofluorocarbon propellant used in the inhaler. Two other prescription inhalers that use CFCs as propellants will be phased out by 2013. New inhalers will use a different propellant that is less harmful to the environment. The Obama administration has not asked the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals to rehear an important health reform case, signaling that the bill should be heading to the Supreme Court to decide whether President Obama's health care reform is constitutional. The Justice Department had until Monday to ask the court to review the case, but the department did not file the paperwork. And that was your trip across the nation. And now let's take a trip around the world with Holly. Iran is threatening to deploy ships off the Atlantic coast of North America, raising tensions between the two nations. This comes days after Iran released two American hikers charged with espionage and held in prison for over two years. The White House revealed last week that more than 20,000 heat-seeking missiles are missing from a Libyan army depot. If the weapons were in the wrong hands, many would consider it to be a nightmare scenario because the missiles have the potential to take down a commercial airliner. And that was your trip around the world, and now let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. Hey everyone, here's your weekly dose of tech news. At Facebook's F8 developer conference last week, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg introduced several profound changes to the popular social network. Zuckerberg revealed that the standard profile page will evolve into timeline and redesigned visual history of everything you've ever done. Along with the usual status updates, photos, users may add content from their past, such as baby pictures and past life events to fill out the stories on the Facebook platform. Another big change will be Facebook gestures, which ditches the like button for a more customizable button for whatever you're doing. No word yet if there will be a dislike button. For more than a century, nothing has been able to go faster than the speed of light. However, if researchers in Europe are right, the cosmic speed limit is wrong, and Albert Einstein's theory of relativity may need to be updated. Members of the OPERA experiment at CERN announced earlier this month that a type of subatomic particle called a neutrino was found to go about 60 nanoseconds faster than it would have taken a light beam to travel the same distance of 454 miles. The researchers recently asked other physicists around the world to independently verify their findings. Now for some Apple news. Yesterday, Apple confirmed that there will be a special iPhone event on Tuesday, October 4th to talk iPhone. Apple is widely expected to introduce its next generation phone hardware, as well as give release dates for iOS 5 and iCloud. Another rumor is that Facebook will choose the Apple event to release their long-awaited iPad app. What we do know for sure is that the event will take place at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern next Tuesday. And you know that I will be there to follow the live blogs and to get you the most up-to-date Apple news. That's all I have this week. I will be sure to stay plugged in to the latest tech news. Now back to Liz and Holly. Thanks, Jimmy, for keeping us connected. Now let's head over to Danielle for your tip of the week. Thanks, Holly. It's that time of year again where we are experiencing a change in the weather. It's always difficult to transition from the warm summer sun to the cooler days of the fall. With the change in season, you may experience a change in your health. I have some tips for you to stay healthy as you adjust to the new season. 
First, try to make it a point to take a daily vitamin every day to support your immune system. They are not expensive to buy, and most brands sell a year's supply in one bottle. Second, dress appropriately for the weather so as to not catch a cold. There are plenty of fashionable fall and winter clothes that you can purchase on a budget. If you are starting to feel under the weather, do your best to catch up on some sleep. As college students, I know how difficult that is, but it's the only way to feel better faster. And those are your tips of the week. Back to you, Liz. Thanks, Danielle, and now let's take a look back in history. This week in 1789, President George Washington established the Supreme Court of the United States by signing the Judiciary Act of 1789. Washington nominated six justices for that first court, all of whom were confirmed. On September 25, 1789, the first Congress approved 12 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. They were sent to the states for ratification. The amendments, known as the Bill of Rights, were designed to protect the basic rights of U.S. citizens. And that was your look back in history. Now let's go to Felicia for your Album of the Week. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your Album of the Week. Gavin DeGraw recently released his fourth studio album titled Sweeter. This is DeGraw's first album to ever feature co-writers such as Andrew Frampton and Ryan Tedder. This album definitely showcases a different side of DeGraw. His courses are stronger, his lyrics are edgier, and his sound is more sexy. With that being said, some of his Love Laws mopey lyrics might have you in the dump. But if you love Gavin's sultry voice and his hard-hitting chorus, then you would definitely love Sweeter. You can purchase Sweeter on iTunes, and be sure to check out 89.1 WYBF FM The Burn throughout the week for your favorite student DJs. Thanks, Liz and Holly. Back to the studio. Thanks, Felicia. And now let's head over to Mary Kate for your weekly sports update. The women's soccer team won their first home game against Philadelphia Biblical University this past weekend, 3-0. Their next CSAC game will be played at noon on Saturday against Keystone College. Ryan Serrata scored the only goal for the Cavs men's soccer Saturday night at Weiner University. This tie game for the Cavs brings their record to a 5-3-1 overall. The 2011 fall season started up for the Cabrini golf team finishing 15th on Monday afternoon at the Franklin and Marshall Invitational at Bent Creek Country Club. Sophomore Robert Bass led the Cavaliers in finishing in 33rd place out of 89 golfers. The Cabrini women's volleyball team played Moravian College earlier this week. They are on the 3-0 streak in the CSAC and 10-8 overall. Let's take a look to see how the Lady Cavs did. <laughs> The game resulted in a 3-2 match win by the Cabrini Cavaliers. The record is now 11-8 overall. Congratulations Giants fans, you got your wish. I know the Philadelphia Eagles 29-16 loss to the New York Giants was tough on all you diehard fans out there, but hopefully they'll be able to bounce back against the San Francisco 49ers this weekend at 1 o'clock. That's all I have for you this week. Now let's back to Holly and Liz. Thanks Mary Kate, and now let's check in with Melissa for your entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. Which star doesn't have a clothing line these days? Gwen Stefani just released Harajuku Mini, a kid clothing line for Target, and Jennifer Lopez released a woman's line for Kohl's. Gwen Stefani's line introduces clothing and accessories for children ranging from infant to teenagers. The price range is very affordable, from $3.99 to $30. This line will hit stores November 13th. Jennifer's line hit stores earlier this month with 51 different looks. If only Taylor Lautner could stick to the Twilight series. This past weekend, Abduction did not do so well, according to E! Online. The movie made it to the fourth spot with a gross of almost 11 million over a period of three days. So what's next for the star? Well, the ladies do enjoy seeing Taylor's abs on the big screen. Desperate Housewives began its eighth and final season. Yes, Wisteria Lane will lose its residence, due to a decline in viewership and an incline in cast salaries. Will this season be a juicy one? Well, it did start off with an unbearable secret. Will the housewives of Wisteria Lane be able to keep it, or will one of the, them break and ruin a marriage and a friendship? That's all I have for you this time. I am Melissa Webb, and you've just been entertained. And that's all we have for this week on location. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, or you can watch the show on YouTube. 
I'm Liz Scopoletti. And I'm Holly Prendergast. Have a great week, Cabrini.